Okay, I need two. Damon, come on. And a girl, of course. Huge. That cool. First of all, you have to be good at charades. Okay, Mom, come on. All right, come on up. Come on up, you two. All right. Here's the game. This move. Eh, not really. Okay. We'll have to dim these lights. Dim the, dim the main lights for me. Okay, go stand behind there, Mark. Let's see what your chatter is look like. Okay, back up a little bit. Closer to the light. No. I mean, come forward. Sorry, come forward. That's the other Mark. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right, so about there. Okay, so they're going to act something out. Okay? They are going to act something out. Charades. And you have to guess it. Okay? Marley, come closer, buddy. You got it? Yeah. Make sense? Everyone got it? Yes? No? Okay. You gotta do behind the screen. You gotta act it out behind the screen, okay? But get real close to the screen. Yes, get real close. Alright, Marley. Yeah, there you go. Pick something to act out. You have 30 seconds. You got it? Alright. Are, uh, are we guessing? Yeah, we don't want Dan to get thing once. Okay. 30 seconds. Bird! 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 Eagle! A dragon! Flying! Dragon flying! Somebody said it was close. Family Feud. 30 seconds. Zoe. A blooper. A blooper. It's a fly. A turtle. It is an insect. Butterfly. Oh, who said it? I heard it. Butterfly. I heard it. All right, one point for the ladies. All right, Damon. Anyone can guess, by the way. Okay, you ready? Good one. I heard somebody say llama. That was really close. Oh, llama. <laughs> Go on. If you need help, I can help you. Oh, yeah. You got it or you need help? You got it? You got it? Here. Go to the tip. Let's see if you can help me out. Together. 
Okay, this is funny. All right, both y'all look at it. Got it? Okay, last one. All right. Sister's birthday, Easter. We got a lot of exciting news. But best of all, today is Resurrection Day. Today is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. So when you think about Easter, a lot of us think about traditions, right? When you think about traditions, as you're growing up, your parents probably have certain traditions that they do with you. Day, or whether you did it last week. All right, growing up, to be honest, we didn't have many traditions in my family for, for Easter. We went to church, and that, that was about the gist of it. But as I've gotten uh, married and had kids, I guess we've uh, kind of built our own traditions that way. And, and one of my favorite things to do is not really all the activities, uh, all of those are fun. So we typically had eggs. Uh, we typically get actual actual eggs and boil them, and those are, you know, you eat them once you find them. And then we always have price eggs. Okay, there's always price eggs. Uh, there's always either like a dollar. Some of them may have a bunch of quarters. So they get pretty heavy. We don't do hundred dollar bills. But let me come to your eating egg hunt. Let me do those. So we do those things, and they're fun. And what I enjoy the most about it, it's not necessarily doing them, but watching the kids, how excited they are to go out there and chase eggs. And as our, as our kids have gotten older, they've kind of gotten away from Easter egg hunt. Now, when they, they know there's money in there, that they get really excited. So that's one of my traditions that I love to do on Easter. And I'm sure as, as my wife and maybe the mothers, as your kids get older and they don't want to Easter egg hunt, it kind of hurts us. But they're still fun to do. So before we get started in the lesson today, why don't you guys tell me, or talk to your small group leader, and tell them some of your Easter traditions, whatever that looks like, whatever that may be. Talk to your group leader, and tell them about some of your Easter traditions, okay? So let's break up uh, in the small group. Uh, this camera right here. Aspen, Aspen, right here, and then I can help the girls. It looks like we got we don't have as many girls, so I'll take or this side. I'll take this group right here. Okay. All right, we got about two minutes to talk about traditions, talk about everything else. All right. Yeah. Well, 
I am right now only we have me and my mom and Corey. So we wake up on Easter, we come to church. But whenever I have um, my own child, which I'm going to have my own child, <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to have the tradition of every Easter morning reading um, the, the Bible story of what is Easter. And so. I want that to be in the That's good too. So, so guys, some of the things that my group was talking about that like they maybe go hunt eggs at the playground, some of them go play on the creek, and then the rest of them really just kind of go to the grandparents and hunt eggs. What are some of the interesting mm -hmm. traditions that you guys heard uh, today in your group? What's something cool that you've never heard before? Goes out to eat somewhere for Easter? Oh, it just goes out somewhere? Yeah. All right, awesome, awesome. So you maybe go out with the family. Carson, what's something you heard today that was kind of cool? Uh, oh, for me, I heard, I said that I don't, I have a lot of people that I have to And even Hunter, I said that I Oh, because you got brothers. That may be at the same house. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Anybody else? Anybody else got something? Interesting, and that's not going out to grandparents and things like that. We just eat pigs in a blanket. Pigs, ooh, pigs in a blanket. You eat them with mustard or without mustard? Ew. I haven't had those in a huh? while. Who eats their pigs in a blanket with mustard? No Nobody. one. That is so nasty. That is nasty. Not you. Yes. All right, so look, guys. So that ain't no, that's another one. So look, when you think of Easter, a lot of times we associate what with Easter? Other than the resurrection of Jesus and him Easter coming back alive, Bunny. what's the animal that we associate with? Easter Bunny! Easter Bunny, right? Easter Bunny. Right? Easter, Bunny. Easter Bunny comes around and he kind of lays eggs on your baskets and then you eat his eggs. How interesting that is. So, did y'all know different countries? They do different things. They do. Like for Australia, for example, Australia actually has something different than a bunny. They have what they call a Filthy. Oh my oh God. God. That's yeah. Weird. That's yeah, those are the weird. That's kind of what they look at. It's like a kangaroo, but a lot smaller. No, that's kind of what they do for Easter. All right. Now let's know. But then as we go to like Norway, in Norway, they actually, where it's real cold, they take like a week off during this time. Yeah, I know we need to move to Norway, Lauren. <laughs> So they go out, and these guys probably like hike mountains and eat chocolate. Now look how cool that is. And they ski, all right, and they also ski. So this guy must have been here on Thursday because the court's probably going to give a lot more detail than I did. So tell her, hold me accountable, okay, buddy? And then, and then if you go down south to Brazil, from Brazil, they do even something even cooler, right? They actually lay out roses and make flowers and things like that in your street. And this is cool to mind them. Oh, that's flowers? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Are they yeah. Yeah. It's it's like a like a yeah, it's all dust covered. So they put it all on the streets. And this is to remind them of how Jesus took the donkey on the Passover that. Y'all remember what the Passover was? Yeah. Uh, he took the Passover. Remember the colt that was tied up? And that, that Jesus rode into Jerusalem that morning. So they remind him of that road that he took. So we all separate, all celebrate Easter a little differently, right? But when we come down to it, when we come down to it, you know, we we, we as Christians we celebrate because of the resurrection of Jesus. And in a minute. We're going to have Mr. Tom and Mr. Tyler, just kind of like how we're going to raise, they're going to come up here and we're going to live or talk through everything that happened during Easter. Now, a lot of times when we think about Easter, just like me, I was excited this morning, right? We think about it being light, happiness. Well, guys, before that light came, Miss Tiffany did a great job last week talking about some of these things. There was a lot of darkness. There was a lot of darkness. I want you guys to kind of think of yourself and put yourself in those in that time. Go back 2000 and 
I don't know, maybe two thousand, one thousand nine hundred and maybe eighty six years ago. No, it won't. It won't quite two thousand. It's thirty three years old. So, so think about think about it from that time when Jesus was there and he has his disciples and these were his best friends, right? And think about what how it all started. We talked about the Passover last week, how it was a, it was a celebration on how a lot, a lot of uh, the people living during that time had broken away from slavery, right? And they, they were given to God, and they were praising God. And here it is, here's a guy, here's a king, the Messiah, that has come into the world to free us from all of our sins. And he selected how many disciples? Twelve disciples. Twelve disciples, right? But we know of one that we're going to talk about in just a minute that betrays him. Okay? So think about that. One of your best friends that you've been hanging out for three years during your ministry. Day in and day out, you've been beside him. And for whatever reason, he betrays him. So our story starts by Jesus kneeling and praying. Okay, so he's praying in the garden of Gethsemane, right? By an olive tree. And guys, it's at this point, Jesus wants to make sure that this is not his will, but his father's will. And I think in our lives, a lot of times, we do the same. We get our mixed emotions. Is it me? Or is it God that wants me to do these things? So he's still saying, Lord, if there's any other way, if this is not your will, take this away from me, right? If this is not the cup that you want me to drink from, do it. And as he's praying, you got a guy named Judas, Iscariot, and basically sold him out. And they're showing up, and this is showing up as Jesus is praying with other folks to take them in. And they weren't coming in like very friendly. They had bats, they had clubs, they had swords, they had everything, guys. It, it, it was not meant to be a friendly, hey, Jesus, we want you to come see, I can't ever say Caiaphas, how you say his name? Is that good? I'm getting a, a nod. Take him Caiaphas and say, hey, you need to send trial before religious, religious believers. And, but as we're taking them, and the money's taken you got one guy that's always jumping out front. And y'all got to understand, look, we're, we're going through a lot, like, in, in the next nine minutes. I challenge you guys, talk to your parents, read a little bit more about the story, read a little more in depth. Everything that I'm just highlighting, you could probably talk about it for an hour. Okay? Every event. Even though it happened like this, there's so many details that are happening here. Okay? And at that time, Peter... Simon Peter, right? The rock. Gets that sword. And he cuts one of the ears of the people that are coming in. Yeah, you can't see the ear. Lower it. Lower it. Right. There it is. So cuts the ear off with the sword, guys. Cuts the ear with the sword. And Peter, you know, just being Peter... Knowing that, hey, this is my Lord that's going to be taken away. He was all in, like, hey, let me get him. Boom. And then Jesus says what? No, that's not the way. I, uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, it was kind of kind of cool to hear this documentary talk about that Jesus didn't want that one event erase everything he had done up till then. Because Jesus up to that point in his whole life has been about peace, has been about love. He could have easily let that go. Never healed the man. But the first thing that Jesus did is reach over and healed him. Now think about that. This is a guy that's coming in to arrest him. This is a guy that's coming in to take him to the cross. This is a guy that's saying, hey, I'm taking you to be crucified. But yet Jesus is saying, hey... I don't want you to get hurt. Let me heal that ear that just Peter just cut off. That same Peter, though, same Peter, John and Peter, it says in the Bible that John and Peter followed <coughs> to where they were going. 
Okay? But they didn't follow them all the way to the top. They followed them all the way to what they call the courtyard, I guess you could say, at the bottom. And, and I, as I read that, I got to thinking, how many times in my life is Jesus calling me, but I don't go all the way to the end? I stop just close enough to see him, but not there to be with him. And that's what Peter did. Everybody else, guys, just dispersed. Everybody else was scared. But Peter being there, he said, no, I'm going to follow Jesus all the way to the end. But yet, with the chicken, before the rooster crowed, he denied him yeah. three times. <clears throat> There's that chicken. Hang him up. Denied him three times, guys. Okay? Denied him three times. And then, and then Jesus, unfortunately, was taken at that point. Right? He was taken uh, to the cross. Right? He was given the cross to be taken. He was put in front of everybody in the temple. And they asked, what should we do with this man Jesus? Even though Pilate didn't see anything he had done wrong, there was all the accusations. It was like, I see no harm in this guy. He has not done anything wrong. And he left it up for the people. And the people said what? Crucify him. Crucify him. So he said, you know, not to appease everybody else. He washed his hands and said, okay, this is what you guys want. And now then, then up to that point, they took him back. And he was beaten. Embarrassed. Mocked. Make fun of, and I and I tried a lot of times, guys, to put myself where Jesus was. What what would you what would you, Cisco Baldwin, on have done if I'm getting mugged, hit, slapped, spit on, laughed at, knowing that that my twelve disciples were there when it all started, and one of them actually. Handed me over. But Jesus knew that the cup that he had prayed when we first started wasn't finished, right? So he took up the cross. He took up his cross. And he began to march, began to go up a hill to be crucified as we talked about. And guys, you got to think about this, how heavy. Uh, this is not like a little cross that, you know, sometimes we wear. This is a cross that's big enough where you can actually hang on. How, how many of you guys ever moved, like, uh, railroad tiles, like the big old cross tiles? Mr. Simmons has. Are those heavy, Mr. Simmons? Yes, sir. Yeah, very heavy. Can you lift it by yourself? Yeah, you probably can. All right, can any normal person lift it by themselves? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so they're, they're pretty heavy, guys. And you got to think this is a big cross. He's carrying up a hill, right? And as he carries this, I can only imagine what's going through his head. Three years that he's poured in that's led to this moment. Right? So on the cross, he dies. And it says, it is finished. Next to two... Really beats sinners. And I think there's a huge part in that story that I love the most. That right there on that, as he's hanging, he looks at the thieves. And that thief says, you know, this you haven't done anything. But yet us, we're sinners. We should be here. And he tells them that he's going to see them in paradise. And I think that's such an awesome, awesome message that even to the last second, that he's taken, Jesus is doing ministry. Jesus is leading people to his Father. And most of all, that our sins, regardless of where we are, are <laughs> and what we're doing, can be forgiven just like that when we love Jesus and we believe in Jesus and we give our life to Jesus. And the Bible tells us that the whole area turned dark. It became a very dark area, right? And the ground shook. And if you read it any farther, you can even see it. There was temples and there was curtains that 
people weren't supposed to look that all those were broken off like saying hey there's nothing between you and God now I'm that bridge I'm that person that's going to put you together he's taken down off the cross <coughs> taken to a cave kind of like a cave I guess is the best way to say it he's wrapped around in, in, in claws and put in there to be buried but that wasn't the end that was just the beginning and I told Lauren and, and the kids this morning that it was all awesome that Jesus showed himself for the first time to women right Mary and who else and who else Mary Magdalene we'll have to look that one up there was two though. There was two women there. Okay, I, it wasn't in my lesson. I didn't look it up. I should have looked it up. But he showed himself. And if you if you look back on those times, women were respected very well. They couldn't be leaders, right? But yet God said, "Hey, you know what? I'm gonna show myself to women first. One, I think men are too stubborn sometimes to to see things the way that they should be. And then they went out and they told everybody." And by this time, a lot of the, a lot of the disciples have gone back to who they were before Jesus came. Okay, but the cool thing is that He resurrected today. Not this exact day, maybe, but three days later, He resurrected for every single one of you. He resurrected so you can have life, so you can have a relationship with God. Regardless of how sometimes, if I can use the word stupid, we are, no matter how dumb and the mistakes and the choices that we make, God saying, I still love you. I still want the best for you. So when I think of Easter and I think of the traditions and I think of what Easter what the resurrection day means to me, it means exactly that. It means redemption. It means being saved, being loved, regardless of who I am and what I do. So in a minute, I'm going to pray for, for everyone. We're going to break into small groups. And I want you guys to share, what, what does Easter mean to you? When you hear Easter... What does that mean to you? Okay? Yeah, we're going to do that too. We're going to do that too. We're going to worship and do all that too. But what does Easter mean to you? And no, don't think about the tradition. So much as, hey, we Easter eggs on. Hey, we, I get, I don't know, candy or whatever that may be. Long term, long term. What does it mean to you? Let me pray for you. Father God, we thank you so much. Lord, um, today we went through probably the, not probably, the most important part of your ministry in your life, Lord. Knowing that you were going to die, be humiliated, be punished, kicked, flogged, laughed at. Father, just uh, friends turning on you. But Lord, you kept your minister, your ministry. You didn't let any of the distractions, the pain, the hurt that you felt as a human, you never let that come between your divine purpose. And Lord, let us just have a purpose like that in our lives. That regardless of what we see as, of, or that we see as, as this world, we're focusing on you. Go through Easter, Father. Let us share what Easter means to us for people that don't know what it truly means. That it's just, it's more than just getting candy, Father. It's more than a building. It's more than uh, what you know. What kind of like nice and eat chocolate? It's more than having sawdust that looks like a like a road, Father. It's about having a relationship with you because you took that cross and that for us. We love you, Jesus. Amen.